welcome to the practical demonstration of some selected dental amalgam alternative restoratives. We have the bulk fill uh, resin composite material. This particular one is a uh, fill tech bulk fill restorative. And uh, this is a gun which is used to dispense the material from the compules. And then I'm sure you are even familiar with that. And then we have a oil, oily bulk fill, which is a flowable bulk fill um, restorative material. As you can see, it has a tip for dispensing this material. Then our commonly used uh, bonding agent. After we have manipulated the bulk fill resin composite, we'll proceed and now handle Sention N. Sention N, as we have learned in the lectures, is actually a resin composite, but then the fillers are alkaline. So it's an alkaline filled resin composite. Sention N is, is, was the first and the most used alkaline filled resin composite. And so we are going to be manipulated. It comes as a powder and a liquid. And as you can see over here, we have a scoop and we have a, a spatula for mixing it. Next material we'll be manipulating is one of the other alternatives and these are glass ionomer cements. The final material we are going to manipulate is glass hybrid. As we covered in the lectures, glass hybrid is an advanced glass ionomer cement which is supplied with a filled resin coat. And uh, as you can see, it's presented as a capsulated version where you have the powder and the liquid in the capsule. And then you have resin coat, uh, which is supplied as a liquid. We'll now have a look at sectional matrix kit, which is essentially a um, compilation of the various items you require to isolate the tooth properly and so that you can end up having proximal contact uh, between the restoration and the, the tooth. Over here, this is a premolar sectional matrix. Basically the difference is the sizes. So the premolar is smaller than the molar. And the end, which is protruding, should go occlusally. Um, so that is a molar one. Uh, these are elastic wedges. Basically they are used for pre-wedging and creating some interdental space between the teeth so that your sectional matrix can enter because it's very thin and it can easily deform and they are of different. Although this is not part of this kit, this is called a fender wedge. And a fender wedge is used to pre-wedge at the same time, protect the adjacent tooth when the cavity preparation process is going on. And they come in different sizes, fender wedge. And uh, instead of a fender wedge or elastic wedge, you can use the normal wooden wedges. So this was an elastic wedge, the green one, and then we have the ring. The ring uh, is supposed to adapt interdentally buccally and, and lingually or palatally to secure the sectional matrix, we shall be demonstrating that. And they come in, like this is good for the premolar and this is a bit wider, it's used for the molar. We had already introduced this as the smallest elastic wedges. You will agree with me, not all the time you will do the restoration and you have no excess material. Neither will you do a restoration and end up with a very smooth surface all the time. So that's why we have finishing and polishing instruments. It's recommended that you use smooth bars. So there is the red color bar, relatively smoother, much smoother than the blue color. Uh, the green certainly is the coarsest and also the, the black. So you go for the red and also the yellow to remove excess material. And uh, once you are done with that, and this is on a high speed, once you're done with that, then you can use the softflex discs or the Arkansas stones. Softflex discs, you need to have a mandrel which you attach to the slow speed handpiece. 
like any other slow speed bar and then you now attach the softless disc starting with the coarsest and then from there you are able to polish the restoration without water you don't need water for this one and then progressively move from the coarse one to the less coarse smooth to the smoothest and by the end of it all you will have a very nice smooth surface of the restoration look at uh, light curing unit I know you are very familiar with light curing units but I want to emphasize two things one you need a light curing unit that has a um, an irradiance of 600 milliwatts per centimeter square so that uh, the materials with a higher depth of cure you have enough photons uh, getting to the bottom layer of that uh, layer that you are building up to do that then you need a radiometer you don't, may not necessarily own one if you don't have an inbuilt one you can own a few dentists in an area can share a radiometer I want to check the irradiance of the one we are going to use today and as you can see it's 1200 milliwatts per centimeter square I thought we can go through handling the material and filling up a proximal cavity box versus a class one just before we do the next step I would like to say that uh, isolation also with cotton rolls and aspiration has been shown to create the first step is to do pre-wedging. You are sure that you have separated the teeth by applying either, either a wooden wedge or you can use the elastic wedges that we talked about or even you can use the fender wedge. You select depending on the tooth size that you are dealing with and try as much as possible to place it. Um, after you have secured the sectional matrix I shall do total etching on this uh, particular tooth where I first selectively etch the enamel and then at the end of the 15 seconds I want to flood the cavity with the etchant because the bonding agent I've selected today is an etchant rinse or the fifth generation bonding agent because of the weight bonding that we want to assure has happened. So next we apply the bonding agent. I only need to do um, 20 seconds. Remember you have to be as close as possible, um, 90 degrees and close as possible so that you have enough irradiance onto the cavity. We are not ready to dispense the material into the cavity so I am going to now dispense the material into the cavity four millimeters I want to pause and ask a question how would you tell that it is four millimeters because we say back fill you need to do four millimeters but how can we tell that it is four millimeters actually you can use your periodontal probe and measure because you know your periodontal probe is uh, graduated and so you, you can actually use it to measure like now here I have only three millimeters actually okay and then I'll be light curing it for 20 seconds as you can see the light curing unit is uh, having the pulse delay um, strategy where after every so often it goes off and that is 20 seconds it's meant to control the polymerization shrinkage I now add the last layer of material concentration of this training is not so much on the restorative part I just wanted to illustrate the material manipulation aspect my final curing 20 seconds pass delay mm. it's one of the strategies of co controlling polymerization shrinkage stress now I'm ready to remove the the ring uh, but I can even commence with the wedge so I want to deassemble the assembly I first remove the wedge I 
with my curved mosquito at reef faucet and then I proceed to now remove the ring and then I will be retrieving the band and it should be pretty difficult to disengage the band which gives you um, an idea of how a tight proximal contact you have achieved so it should not just be easy and there I go the final step is to now finish the restoration as I said in the beginning we want smooth bars like the red collar bar and uh, then we remove the excess and thereafter polish it with soft flex discs Finish with the soft flex discs. Then I move now to the next um, coarseness, which is smoother than the one I was using don't need water for the soflex stage and then I'm on the second last in the beginning I said that we'll be manipulating two resin composites so now we are going to manipulate the alkaline filler uh, composite and the product that we are going to manipulate is one which has been very uh, widely used as an alkacite and that is Sention N uh, Sention uh, comes in two options you have self cure and you also have dual cure um, it's actually the same material that is self cure that you can either use self cure or you can uh, also add the photopolymerization the light cure and it's also optional for you to apply bonding agent or not apply bonding agent so it gives you quite some flexibility and so I'll proceed and uh, manipulate it there's a scoop and also the the liquid again it has to be a neat drop and it's always good to to tap your liquid bottle and shake the powder bottles so that you can have even distribution of the constituents so I will first um, dispense the drop 90 degrees is how I hold the the, the bottle and then I get one neat drop that looks like a neat drop and then I dispense the powder again it's a level spoon and it will cause for rapid addition you should um, you should mix it into the powder in uh, 45 seconds and again it's good to use an agate spatula if you have one so I will do it in two increments Sention is um, a good alternative to dental amalgam but you can only apply it on moderate sized cavities of course literature has a lot of uh, indications for it but it's also good to wait for long-term clinical trials for these materials so I'm about to get to the 40 seconds I believe it's actually a packable material so once I'm done with the in cooperation of this powder I'll be I'll be placing it in the in the cavity which is isolated the same way we isolated with the resin composite now I'm ready uh, to to pack the material I have my spatula 
and as I shared the other time, just hold with a small surface area so that you can easily release it into the cavity. And uh, I always wipe my instrument. So you pack it. This material should be contoured after the shiny surface has, has become dull. And it is another bulk fill type of material with unlimited with a limited depth of cure. So another bulk material. In fact, it's also referred to as a bulk fill alkacite. Yeah, and one, one scoop can give you pretty enough material for most of the cavities that you will be filling. And uh, so I'm about to be done with the process myself. The beauty with the alkacites is that um, they are biosmart. They are biomimetic materials. After the material is set, we'll polish it the same way. The next material we are going to manipulate is a high strength glass ionomer cement. Uh, as we all know, they are chemically adhesive but glass ionomer bond can be modified by applying a conditioner on the dentine. Sometimes the manufacturer may supply a conditioner or a cleanser which uh, can come together with a kit. But in the absence of that, you can constitute for yourself. For instance, the high strength glass ionomer cement that we are manipulating is Fuji 9 and you can have a half strength of it. The bond for glass and cement is chemical. You can constitute for yourself from uh, the polyacid supplied by having 50% of the polyacid and water, and then you use that to condition the dentine, and that is what we are going to do for this demonstration. So you place an amount of the polyacid, and then you add equivalent amount of water, And then you will mix these two and uh, apply on the tooth. So I'll mix. I've now constituted for myself a conditioner for the glass ionoma cement. The conditioner is applied into the tooth cavity wall for 20 seconds. We wash it after 20 seconds. And now we are ready to start manipulating the material. Just dry the cavity. Remember, glass animal cement is moisture tolerant. The worry is not there, even when you have to isolate with a tofflemer, like in this case without rubber dam. In manipulating glass animal cement, you want to make sure you get the correct powder liquid ratio. And how to do that is to assure that first of all, you should uh, tap the liquid and also shake the bottle so that you get uh, uniform constituents. And then dispense the, the liquid a neat drop with the bottle at 90 degrees. So I'll try and do that. A neat drop, that's a neat drop. Well done. And then now we do the powder. We want a level spoon uh, of the fluffed powder so that we'll get a good mix. GSS should be mixed rapidly. So you, you should have like two portions that you're going to wrap into the liquid. And this should be done within 30 seconds. So very rapidly and use a small surface area. 
so that you have a, this mix now which is actually restorative and you'll be now able to uh, build up the restoration. A well mixed glass anima cement is shiny in, and should uh, be able to bond well. If it's too dry then now you lose out the chemical bond. I always wipe my instrument so that I don't struggle after that. As we had said uh, when we were manipulating the alkacite, if you want to have an easy release of the material by the instrument, you should actually touch it with a small surface area and then you should be now ready to build up the restoration. It's actually a packable glass ionomer cement. I should be able to pack it and finish it just like the other restorations. In any case, you know how to do this. So I was not planning to go beyond this in the manipulation of this high strength glass ionomer cement. It is applicable, as we said, in deciduous uh, teeth and you can use it in uh, low stress bearing areas in the permanent dentition. What we are going to demonstrate is the glass hybrid. And as we saw in the lecture, this is a modification that has been done on the high strength glass ionomer cement. So we are going to manipulate Equiaforte. Uh, Equiaforte is one of the, it's almost like synonymous to glass hybrid in the sense that it's one of the earliest and it has performed for a long time. So it comes in a capsule. Okay. And uh, before you place it in the amalgamator to mix, you should activate it by pressing the capsule down to, to push up the plunger. Like that, right? In 10 seconds, you should transfer the material into the amalgamator and mix it. You should also be ready with the, with the gun. So within a very short time, because this material has a working time of 1 minute and 30 seconds, you should uh, load it into the gun and then uh, prime it by clicking twice. And after that, you should be ready to dispense the material in the cavity. Now dispense the material right into the cavity. It becomes very convenient. And then it's a bulk fill. So you do one application. You can even do two cavities with one, with one capsule. The important thing here is that your working time is one minute, 30 seconds. And also you can start uh, condensing the material once the surface becomes dull. During this time, there should be no moisture uh, accessing the material. In case you are not able to control moisture, you should, you should uh, have applied the resin coat at this stage. So in two and a half minutes, this material sets. So I'm ready to actually apply it on the, on the fillings. And I need to light cure. The light cure is 20 seconds. And you are very familiar with that. And you are good to go. You just make sure you apply it in moderate size cavities and small cavities as we wait for more clinical trials for this material. Colleagues, thank you very much for your participation. We are almost coming to the end of this. Kindly stay on. We will have a feedback session and a short time to fill a post-training questionnaire. God bless you all.